Today we're looking at this beautiful Nikormat FTN. It's meant to be a consumer camera, a cheaper camera. But what are we comparing it to? Something like this beautiful beast, Nikon F. So this is regarded as a professional camera. By the way, we have another video on this one. And this is regarded as a consumer camera. As it turned out, this was extremely successful. And a lot of professional photographers prefer to have this. A smaller, lighter, extremely well-built camera with the same excellent materials, all metal, nice and heavy, taking exactly the same lenses with an even more reliable metal shutter vertically tra traveling. Actually quite an advanced camera for, for that time and still working today flawlessly. Furthermore, in terms of design language, this brought in so many innovations that have been copied by Nikon and a lot of other people. How about this? A completely different century. Just two years ago, Nikon ZFC. Similarities are stark. Do you see? The pentaprism, the similarities, location and configuration of the cold shoe, hot shoe. Those were the days when an innovation was successful, everybody would copy it mercilessly. See this geometry, this geometry, that's the iconic Canon, Canon AE-1. Exact geometry there, the exact geometry there. Do you think they had no option but to use that geometry? No. They had many options and I'll show you. For example, this is a beautiful Leica R8. See? The pentaprism has been set lower and the sides have been brought up so the mechanism is in there now and therefore the top is almost flat. So it's not automatic. So people say this is a vintage look. But based on what? I think of all the Nikon cameras it's likely to be more based on this than even the so-called professional Nikon cameras. I showed you these cameras uh, brothers and sisters and cousins and uh, mortal enemies and uh, so on but I left the best of them for the last. This is the younger brother Nikor Matiel. Younger, faster, more advanced, more electronic if you would like to call that more advanced and of course full black which is the sports model. So let's say these were made by car companies that would be a reliable work forever Toyota family car sedan. This would be a uh, sports model Lexus. Let's have a look at the features of this camera. We'll start with the top. Film winder is here. As you pull this off, that red dot means that the light meter is on now. A very satisfying sound. Very smooth. So that's the shutter release. It's threaded so you can provide a uh, cable release. This is a film counter. It automatically resets to zero. This is the button for depth of field. So it uh, closes the aperture and shows you the exact depth of field. This is a cold shoe, not a hot shoe. And it comes off. I'll show you in a minute. This is an interesting feature over here. This is an external light meter with a needle. There's a replica of this inside on the right hand side. So you can look down on it and adjust the light meter uh, without disturbing anything or anybody or alarming anybody. Then look inside, do a final check and shoot. Back to the ZFC. Look at this little thing. Little window here, little window here. Do you see these design clues? This is the film winding knob with this 
amazing innovation for quickly returning the film to the canister. It was much later that Nikon came up with the idea of pulling this up to open the back door. This almost looks better without the cold shoe. We take this off, put this back on. Now it's quite a sleek looking camera right on the front we have the self timer over here it works in the conventional way that you would expect it has been used in this fashion for decades by that time so you pull it down release the shutter it goes bzzz, and then click a very good recommendation for you is don't use it okay because after three or four decades they get stuck in the middle because that um, delay action is all spring operated it's not electronic if it gets stuck it thinks that it's not the right time to release the shutter so this will be locked up it will not work so it's a brick and who's going to repair a Nikkor mat for you in this century so even if it's there don't use it Everything else is likely to work for you for another 100 years. On this side, we have the lens release button, which you press and you rotate the lens in what direction, you might ask? Oh no, it's not in the same direction that you unscrew a bolt or turn on a tap or something like that. It's the opposite direction, to the right. So you have to remember this lens comes out, a bayonet mount. It took decades for camera manufacturers to decide to have bayonet mounts. How many decades did they have screw mount? Okay, easy. And then when they did it, they had to do it this way. How does the lens communicate the aperture setting to the body? There's no electronic connection. There's no cam, you know, those uh, connection points, the golden connection points, there's nothing there, nothing there. And who wants to rely on uh, electronic connections anyway? So Nikon invented this thing, which is called rabbit ears, with a notch. And there's a counterpoint to that, which communicates the setting to the body. So you have to pull this to the right, put this on 5.6, and the two of them will perfectly match and then rotate and click for the scale of the aperture from the highest to the lowest to be communicated to the camera's meter you have to do this a couple of times and now the camera knows the entire range it is working with easy enough but of course later on both Nikon and other cameras discovered much easier ways of communicating aperture to the body from inside the ring, from inside rather than from outside. It would have been an obvious thing, uh, but you know, it took a while to figure it out. Let's look at another interesting and unique feature of Nikkor Mat, probably unique in all Nikons, and that is uh, shutter speed is not on top. Almost every Nikon, including um, this monster, has the shutter dial on top. But Nikon Mat has it at the base of the lens mount over here, and it is adjusted with this tab here, this, and seen over here against that dot which is the index. So it's a bit counterintuitive. This is the opposite direction on the other side. You have to hold it and then rotate it 125, 60, 30, 16 down to B. Okay. Maximum is one thousandth of a second, which was pretty good for the time. A little inconvenient, but you get used to it with your left hand, with left finger. You adjust that and uh, then you quickly lift your fingers up and do the aperture so you both of them with the same hand 
Let's look at this ring here. That's the focus ring. This particular lens goes from about 0.3 to infinity. That was meters, of course. This is Nikkor 28mm 3.5. A very good lens for street photography, architectural photography, landscape photography. This is the rewind knob. Press this one. Rewind. Easy. This is the tripod mount. And this is the single battery it takes. Once again, Nikon has done it. If you want to open something, you expect it to go left, right? Like open a tap, undo a screw. But no, it had to be the other way. Goes to the right to open, left to close. The hint over there. <laughs> but what does it mean? Does it mean open? Okay, there's a little O, or is it zero? No idea. Anyway, open to the right, quarter turn, battery comes out. Warning number one. The batteries it takes are the old Mercury button batteries that are no longer made or sold because of the environmental concerns with Mercury. You can get replacement ba batteries which are alkaline, but they're not exactly the same voltage. Instead of 1.35 volts, they're 1.5 volts. The meter will work, and in this one, the meter does work with one of those batteries. However, it is inaccurate by between one and two stops. It tries to underexpose the film. So you can compensate for it mentally. Whatever it says, you ignore it and um, increase the uh, exposure. So that's all there is in relation to this particular beautiful, proud Nikomat. Easily as good as a lot of uh, professional cameras, although it was meant to be sold cheaper. No reason for it really, because it's very high quality. Well, let's do a little bit of comparison. When this beautiful Nikkor mat was marketed, cameras easily five to ten times its price looked like this. No pentaprism, rangefinder, and uh, most of them no light meter either. This one actually has a light meter. Other comparison points are with Nikon's own heritage. For example, how about this one? Next generation, Nikon EM, smaller, still the same lens, now it has additional features, a better light meter from inside, so now the consumer camera has shifted from this to this. Eventually it uh, ended up with consumer cameras like this one. By then, we must say, it was quite unfortunate. That's a FM10. It's not even a Nikon camera. It's Cosina, branded as Nikon. Plastic, fake metal. It's a cheapie. It works. Now, when we go a bit further, for those who are consumers, and they have, have a bit of money, this leads to this eventually, F501. And now people are just counting features. Canon says this, Nikon says that, so we have more buttons to tick. So this simplicity, this beautiful simplicity turns into this. The same height, or even less, now has a motor drive. Doesn't even show, there's no attachment, but there's a motor drive in it. There's batteries inside there, and uh, even more buttons on this side, more buttons there, more sliders there. Wherever you look, there's a button. There's buttons, 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 buttons. Okay, there's buttons galore. Okay, so the definition of a consumer camera became a collection of features. Let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. Pull this thing down very hard and it opens. Thankfully, it is a hinge. Film goes in here, pull this up, 
film here stretch the film over there over the sprockets then you find the slot put it in there and you give it a bit of tension and ready to go close and done one innovation that Nicormat FTN brought in and the reason that a lot of professionals actually prefer this to the so-called professional cameras is this uh, metal shutter it is beautiful in every way you can barely see it is vertically traveling the shorter travel very fast one thousandth of a second less vibration and because it's metal it is not vulnerable like those silk curtains where you point at the Sun and it burns a hole in it this is metal you can see it's going up it's three blades here and it's done that was it our review of this important historic iconic and beautiful Nikkor mat this Nikkor mat is exactly the same camera as the one that is sold in Japan under the name of Nikko mat without the R I'm not going to drop anything into this water.